just a little bit you want to feel a bit healthier you want to feel more put together feel like you have your life together but you don't want to completely change your lifestyle and overhaul your entire routine because that's just not realistic so today I wanted to share 10 little things that I have incorporated into my life over the past few years that I feel like have really benefited me emotionally physically mentally and that I just could not live without now you guys know this is my year of YouTube. We're upping the quality, we're upping the upload frequency, and for example, we're in 4K right now. So if you wanna watch this in the highest quality possible and see all my flyaways, then you can go down to the settings and click on the quality of the video and put it to 4K. So very exciting things happening here and I'd love for you to subscribe and stick around. So these 10 tips are all over the board. Some of these are things that have to do with like health and wellness. Some have to do with making friends. Some have to do with just personal development. So take what you want, leave what you don't need. If you've watched my channel before, you may know a lot of other small habits that I've been cultivating over the years that I feel like really helped me out. You guys know I love journaling. I love my daily walks and you know, cliche things like that. I think they're amazing, even though they're cliche, but I tried not to include those habits that I talk about all the time. I tried to really think about what are some new things that I've started doing recently or within the past year, within 2023, um, that really have improved my life. So I'm trying to share some different ideas here with you guys. Okay, so the first thing is a very small incremental change um, that has to do with health and wellness that I just started doing this year in 2024. But basically I stopped drinking super, processed sugary creamers in my morning coffee. Now, I'm not saying I cut this out cold turkey. If I go to a coffee shop, I love a yummy specialized latte. Or maybe if it's like back in the holidays when it becomes seasonal again to have the pumpkin spice and to have the gingerbread, like I will be having my gingerbread and my pumpkin spice lattes. But I thought a way for me to kind of reset for the new year and to cut back a little bit was to cut out my sugary morning lattes and just switch for whole milk or like a nut pods creamer. Now I'm transitioning to just having um, organic whole milk in my coffee in the morning with some like honey or sometimes I'll do like maple syrup or brown sugar. But again, I'm not really caring about the sugar as much as I am caring about the chemicals and it being processed. Of course, I'm not a nutritionist or a doctor, but this was just like something that was so simple in my mornings that I feel have really helped me not start my day with just a ton of chemicals and processed sugar. It's literally the first thing I put in my body in the morning was a really great place to start and something that's a very easy switch out once you get used to it. The second thing was incorporating more things I did as a kid into my 20s. I have talked about this on my channel, especially over the summer. You know, I was like, we're having a sporty girl summer and I've kind of carried that with me throughout the fall and now into the winter and I'm excited to bring, you know, even more outdoor sports and activities into my life in the spring and summer again. For me, this is healing my inner child because I did a lot of sports growing up. I did like eight or nine sports, guys, I'm not kidding. Um, and then I also did like dance and theater. So I just did a lot of extracurriculars and had a lot of hobbies when I was a kid. I miss doing all of that now. And so like this summer, I started playing tennis and pickleball and golf again. Um, last winter, my friends and I would just get together once a week and like teach ourselves a little dance. So you know when you're kids and like you are jumping on a trampoline or like you get your friends together and you make up a dance to perform to your parents. Like we were basically doing that as 20 something year old girls just in our apartments, we just for ourselves. And it was really fun, we did that last winter. I would love to get back into musical theater again or just something like that, but it could be whatever it was for you as a kid. Maybe it was painting, maybe it was learning an instrument, maybe it was taking care of animals. Whatever you love to do as a kid, try incorporating that back into your life, just even if you do it once a month. Um, and I promise it is going to just make you so much happier and feel very fulfilled. And it's just, we all know how good hobbies are for us, especially as someone who um, works for themselves full times. So it's easy to make everything I do into something that's monetizable, but just being outside, like playing a sport, being off my phone is so healing for me and I could not recommend more. Number three is prioritizing friendships. And I'm gonna give you guys very tactical advice and say if you are someone where at this point in your life, you feel like you don't have a ton of friends, you don't have really quality friendships, that's something you're trying to work on in 2024, 
make a pact with yourself that you are going to prioritize fr making friends and friendships for the next year. I did this last year because I was living alone and working alone and I was like, I just am such an extrovert actually. Like I get energy from other people. I need to see people more often. And so I made it a point to really pour into new friends and building new friendships here in Nashville. And that just means going the extra mile. It means maybe making sacrifices of your own personal time to go out and grab coffee. Maybe you don't feel like going over to a friend's house that night, but they invited you over and you're really trying to prioritize building new friendships. If they take a lot of effort, just like a relationship, like you can't build a relationship with a significant other by never seeing them or never making them a priority. And so if you're trying to grow your friendships, it's kind of the same thing. You have to put in the work, put in the time, put in the efforts. Um, but I promise the end result is so worth it. And I feel like once you get close with people, you don't have to see them once a week or you don't have to see them all the time. You can go then, you know, maybe a month without seeing someone, but because you have that base relationship that you've built over the past year, then it becomes a little bit more relaxed. Um, but I feel like when you're starting to build friendships, it re you really do have to put in the time and effort. And for me, that meant sometimes sacrificing um, weeknights when I could maybe be working a little bit longer or I could, you know, have some time to myself. I would drive to new friends' houses 30 minutes, 45 minutes outside of where I live um, just to, you know, go watch Bachelor. That was also rearranging my schedule so I could make it to friends' birthdays and not always maybe doing what I necessarily wanted to do, but doing what they wanted to do because I was prioritizing that friendship. And of course, you need to do this with people that respect your time. You can't do this with people that are possibly toxic to you or your other relationships. Um, but if you found quality people that you want to become closer with, it does take a lot of time and effort, uh, but it's so worth it in the end. Okay, this goes along with also like working out and wellness, but it is only doing workouts I love. I made this switch a few years ago and I've never looked back. Like you will not see me doing a CrossFit class. I'm sorry, you won't see me outside running for a few miles unless I feel like that. Like maybe one day or two days a year, I'm like, you know what, I just wanna go outside and run and I just get that urge and so I listen to my body and I do it. But usually this for me, it looks like trying new fun workout classes. I love doing Pilates, I love doing bar, I love doing sometimes cycling. Again, it depends on my mood. I'm not a huge cardio girl, but if I feel like in the mood for a cardio class, I do it and it's so fun. Um, and then I love doing outdoor walks um, or like inclined walks, some hikes in the summer. So only do workouts that you actually enjoy and I promise it is gonna make your life so much better. You won't be dreading the gym, you won't be dreading just going on a treadmill to run. I get on the treadmill, I walk at an incline and I watch my favorite YouTube videos and it's something I look forward to throughout the week instead of dreading. Number five is another small switch and that is using a real alarm clock instead of using my phone. We all know the hatch alarm clock. She's sitting here behind me. Um, you definitely don't need this $200 alarm clock. You can just get one off of Amazon. There's actually dupes for the hatch on Amazon, but there's also just normal alarm clocks. But just having something next to your bed that wakes you up in the morning so you're not stressed about you know waking up on time or not, but that isn't a screen first thing in the morning is so nice. And this has really helped me um, make my morning routine a little bit more efficient. Before my morning routine would start with 30 minutes of scrolling on my phone and it was so unproductive, but now I set my phone across my room. And so to get up for the day or if I need to check my messages, I literally have to get out of bed. And so it starts my morning routine earlier. And I do love the hatch alarm clock because of the slow wake up. It's not just a blast of sound first thing in the morning. It wakes you up slowly with light and then with soft music. And I also use it for white noise when I go to sleep. So it also really has improved my sleep. And I love that it's a white noise machine along with an alarm clock. And there's other tools like meditations and stuff that I haven't even tapped into yet, but it is a good investment if you're looking for it. Okay, number six is listening to podcasts and audiobooks that I actually enjoy and realizing that podcasts don't just have to be educational. So this is kind of like two parts. If you're starting to get into personal development and you haven't started listening to like helpful podcasts, this is a great way to get a little bit of motivation, inspiration throughout your day. You can listen to wellness podcasts, self-help, um, beauty podcasts. You can listen to, of course, there's topics about literally anything. Um, and so I have been listening to podcasts in like that self-improvement lifestyle category for maybe eight years now. Like literally I was listening to podcasts in high school. I started one in high school. So I like nailed that category down. 
However, now I started getting getting into listening to audiobooks as well because um, I love podcasts, but sometimes like I follow a bunch, but there's just not one that I'm in the mood to listen to that day. And so I've started listening to an audiobook, and it's a great way for me to hit my reading goals um, because I read more fiction than nonfiction now. It's a great way for me to get more nonfiction reading into my repertoire. But then going along with the second half of this tip, which is to listen to books and podcasts that you actually enjoy, I started finding some podcasts that don't have anything to do with self-improvement, that literally are just for fun, that are pop culture related, that are just conversation related, or that are even like interest related, like Disney, okay? I listen to a Disney foodie podcast every now and then, it's my guilty pleasure, and it's really fun. So um, don't be embarrassed by what you like to listen to. Some people love like murder mysteries, true crime podcasts, like that's their guilty pleasure. That is, couldn't be farther from what I like to listen to. So I just found the type of fun podcast that I like to listen to. And I usually listen to those like when I'm not in a working mindset. But listen to what you like. Don't feel like you have to listen to a certain type of podcast just because other people recommend it or are listening to it or that is good for you. Number eight is another food habit. Again, I am not a nutritionist or doctor by any means. This is just what works for me. I've tried diet culture. I've tried counting calories. I did a lot of that in high school and college. And just since graduating, it's just not what I do at all. And I used to be someone who read the back of like nutrition labels a lot as well. Now, the only reason I really look at a nutrition label is to see the protein amount or to see the ingredients like are there chemicals or is it whole ingredients? Now I look more at the meal that I'm eating as a whole and I'm like, does this have protein? Does this have vegetables? Does this, this have carbs and fat? And if it checks all those boxes, then I'm good to go. And I just feel like I'm really happy with my relationship with food. And I know sometimes your relationship with food can completely control your mindset. If you're someone who's constantly thinking about food, it controls your thoughts. It controls what you do in a day because you're thinking too much about like, oh, I can't eat this because I'm eating this later. Like, I just, I know that toxic mindset and I just want you to know that it's possible to break free from it. And when you start healing your relationship with food and start really following intuitively what your body wants and needs, it is beautiful. It is an amazing thing. And I'm so happy that it, it I've gotten to this point. It's taking me years, but I really now have such a great relationship with food. I eat what I want. I eat when I'm hungry and it's as simple as that. And I try to eat as healthy as possible. You guys know, but it's, I'm not perfect by any means. And I eat what I want as well. So <laughs> number nine is buying and using products that make each day feel very special and luxurious. This does not mean you have to buy expensive items. There are so many amazing drugstore brands out now that have that elevated feel. Frenchie and Salt Air are two that are sold at Target. Frenchie is Ashley Tisdale's line actually, and Salt Air, I've been using their body wash for about six months now, and I love it because the packaging is perfect. The scents make you feel like you're at a beachside spa, and there's so many amazing drugstore, as well as high-end, of course, brands that are beautiful packaging, beautiful scents, and just using those types of products in my hair, on my body, my makeup, my skincare has really elevated my everyday. And you know, we're putting this stuff on our bodies every day. You're washing your face every day. You're putting on this makeup. So why not choose products that make you feel your best and that make you look your best and act your best? I'm not saying you have to completely ditch everything and everything that feels cheap in your you know, cabinets and in your shower, you have to throw it all out and go buy everything new. This is a slow process, like slowly one by one. Maybe next time you're buying um, soap for your body, instead of getting a bar of soap, you get that nicer body wash, you know, that's $11 instead of $4. It's little changes like that, that over time, I feel like really help you feel your best throughout the day and make getting ready fun. And then the last small realistic change that I started doing to better myself is doing bi-monthly deep cleaning and organizing sessions. So about twice a month, every other week, I will do something that's a little bit more deep cleaning than like a typical Sunday reset. You know, every Sunday I like do laundry, wash my sheets, vacuum, wipe down counters, wipe the sink out, like little things like that. 
but usually twice a month is when I do a deep clean on my shower and I organize um, a drawer or a spot in my apartment. So it could be a cabinet, it could be my pantry, it could be my fridge, it could be wiping down baseboards, vacuuming those hard to reach spots that I miss in my just weekly cleaning cycles. So just being able to do this about twice a month, usually every other Sunday is when I take a little extra time to do these deep cleaning and organizing projects has really helped me live like in a more organized and clutter-free life. I feel like I have control over my apartment, over my spaces. I don't feel like I'm constantly catching up and constantly just trying to keep up with the day-to-day -day cleaning. Like my apartment most days feels clean and feels fresh, which is amazing. It's just, it's crazy how like a clean space makes you feel so much better, makes you feel so much more productive and put together. I fully believe your physical space really affects your mental space. And so when you have a clean and organized home to come to, every day you're able to create more you're able to be more productive you're able to be more at peace and so figure out what works for your schedule maybe it's every week you're organizing something maybe it's just once a month you take a day to deep clean and organize whatever works for you and your schedule start implementing it and you'll start seeing a better and more improved version of yourself all right those were all of my tips of little small incremental changes that i've started doing in my life to be my best self I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you maybe got a takeaway or two. Um, let me know if any of these little things resonated with you. If you've done them before and they've worked or you're going to start doing them, let me know in the comments below and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.